Greetings, this is a walkthrough of how to program the graph paper from class using our turtles using a top-down programming approach where we'll create our own methods. So here I'm starting with a sort of blank hello world kind of a turtle program. I'm just gonna make sure it works right away. If you don't always start from a working example that you've tested to make sure that it works, um, it's gonna be a lot harder for you. All right, so I know this works. Um, here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna write out the steps in normal English and then we'll create methods to, to do each of those steps. So the first step is move the turtle to the upper left, because that's where I want to start drawing my graph paper. And then I want to repeat many times, I don't know how many times, and what I want to repeat is I want to draw a row of squares, and then after that I want to move turtle starting, I want to move the turtle to the start of the next row. So if you imagine this in your head, the turtle's going to go to the upper left. It's going to go all the way across the street, screen drawing rows of squares. Then it's going to move itself back to the left-hand side of the screen, right ready to start drawing the next row. And then we're going to repeat that a bunch of times until we've drawn all of the rows. All right, so this is a good overall plan. Let's start with move the turtle to the upper left. So I could just start typing code here, but I think I'm going to make a method to do this because this represents a single logical step. So I'm going to create a method called um, move turtle to top left. And then down here, I'm going to create my method. Be very careful. Don't create your method here or there. You've got to create it outside of setup. So here's where setup starts. Here's where setup ends. So I'm going to start right in there. I'll say public static void. I want to call it move turtle to top left. I know I'm going to need to take a turtle as input because I'm going to be ordering a turtle around inside this method, so I have to have access to a turtle variable. The only way for this method to have access to any variables up here is by copying the value as an input. And I know I have to create this variable in order to hold that input value. All right, so my turtle is called a now. I'm going to say a dot pick your pen up. Um, I know that my turtle is starting in the center of the screen facing right. So I'm going to turn left by 180 degrees. So now I'm facing left. I'm going to go forward by 300. So that's taking me to the left-hand side of the screen. I'm going to turn right by 90 degrees. So now I'm facing up. I'm going to go forward by 300, so now I'm at the upper left-hand corner. But I'm also facing up still, so I'm going to turn right again by 90 degrees, and then I'm going to put my pen down. So I believe that this is going to work, um, but you shouldn't just trust it, you should test it. So up here in setup again, this is my command. This was empty before and it was complaining in red, and it says the method move turtle to top left turtle is not applicable for the arguments empty thing. What it's saying is this is my method and it's expecting a turtle as input, but here I'm not giving it any inputs. So the name of my turtle here is Yurtle, so if I put Yurtle here, now I'm giving it my Yurtle turtle as an input. So it will copy Yurtle here inside A, and now when I'm ordering A arounds down there, I know A got its value from Yurtle up here. So it's actually secretly Yurtle that I'm ordering around. All right, so far so good. Um, how am I going to test to see if this works? Well, I could just run it. Hmm, it's not displaying anything. But that makes sense because here I picked my pen up and I did a bunch of stuff and then I put my pen down. So I haven't actually had it move around with the pen down yet. So let's, out here, have it move forward by 100. Great, you can sort of see a little green line up here, I hope. And so that shows me that my turtle is, in fact, at the upper left the way that I think it should be. All right, so I've made a method and I've tested it. Let's make our other two methods. Uh, if I'm going to repeat something many times, I'll use a for loop. I don't know how many times yet, so I'm just going to put in a number. 
And we're going to need to come back to this later to figure out what it should be. Let's add a comment. To do, figure out what 100 should really be. So now this is a note to ourselves to come back and do this. All right, inside the loop, I want to draw a row of squares. So I'm going to create a method for that, draw a row of squares. I'm going to move the turtle to the start of the next row, so I'll create a method for that. Move turtle to start next row. All right, so again, this reads almost exactly like my algorithm. I'm going to loop 100 times. I'm going to draw a row of squares. I'm going to move to the next row. So now we've just got to do each of these steps. I'm going to comment this out for the moment because I don't like having errors in my code. Um, but I know that I'm going to uncomment it later and fill it in. So let's make draw a row of squares. I know I'm going to need to give it a turtle as input because it's going to be doing something with my turtle. And I'm going to create the method right here. Public static void draw row of squares. It's going to take a turtle as input. I'll call the turtle A again. You could call it whatever you wanted. You could call it T. All right, draw a row of squares. How am I going to draw a row of squares? So this is now like a sub problem. I'm forgetting about the rest of the graph paper, and now I'm just thinking, how can I write a program that will draw a row of squares? Well, I guess if I drew one square, and then went forward a little bit, and then drew another square, and then went forward a little bit, and so on, that would eventually draw a row of squares. So let's do that approach. Um, I'm going to have a loop, which is going to loop a certain number of times. And I want to draw a square. And then I want to tell my turtle to move forward a little bit. I was just about to type yurtle, but now I'm thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not in setup. Where am I? I'm inside draw row of squares. So inside this little universe, what's my turtle called? It's called A. So I'll say A dot forward 100. All right. So this must mean that my I'm going to make my uh, squares be size 100. So draw a square. I guess I'm going to need to give it my turtle. So now this is going to draw a square and then move forward a little bit. And I'm going to do that 20 times. Let's just stop and think for a second. Uh, if each of my squares is length 100, and I'm going to draw 20 of them, I think that's much too big. I think that's going to make a graph paper that is uh, 2,000 long. But my screen is only 600 pixels long. So let's change this. Uh, I guess I'm only going to have six squares that are all length 100. That's a little silly, but that's on purpose because I want you to change this later. All right, so now I think this should draw a row of squares if only I had this command. So let's make that command. Here I am outside of this method. Because remember, when you declare a method, you've got to declare it outside of other methods. And I'm going to call it draw a square and it's going to take a turtle as input. I'm going to call my turtle t this time. Um, but remember, turtle t gets its value whenever this command is run. So when I run draw a square, it takes a, which is a turtle, and a gets copied here into t, so that inside this command, the turtle's real name is t. So it's the same turtle. It's just sort of like every time I hand it to a new command, I'm giving it a different name. So here it was called yurtle, and then when I handed it to this command, now it's called a. And so I can tell a to do stuff. And now when I hand it to the draw a square command, a is going to get renamed to t. All right, how do I make it draw a square? Let's have a loop that loops four times for the four sides. And I'm going to tell t to go forward by 100. And then I'm going to tell t to turn right by 90 degrees. And if I do that four times, that's drawn a square. Cool, so I think that should work. Uh, let's test it out. So this should be drawing a row of squares already. I don't see any errors on the right-hand side here. Yep, it looks like it's drawn a row of squares all right. Cool. OK, so now I just need to get it to the next row. So move turtle to start next row. I'm going to create that method. 
move turtle to start next row. Again, I'm going to need a turtle. I'll call it A again. And up here, I have to give it the turtle that I want it to use. So I'm going to give it Yurtle, because that's the only turtle I have. All right, move turtle to start next row. Well, let's see, where did I end up? I guess when I finished my previous row, I was on the right-hand side of the screen facing to the right. How do I know that's true? If you trace this code very carefully and think about every single step, what's it doing and where does it end up, you can figure that out for yourself. Okay, so let's assume I'm at the very right-hand side of the screen facing right. I think I'm going to tell my turtle to turn around. So I'll have it turn right by 180 degrees. And now I'm going to have it go forward back to the left-hand side of the screen. So if I was all the way off to the right, now I'm going to move 600 to be at the very left. Now I'm going to rotate left by 90 degrees so that I'm facing down. I'm going to go forward by 100 because that's the length of the square that I'm drawing. Now I'm going to turn left by 90 degrees so that I'm facing to the right again. And now I should be sort of one row down facing to the right all ready to draw the next row of squares. So going back up here to setup, let's think. I'm going to loop 100 times. I'm going to draw a row of squares. Then this command is going to make me go all the way back to the left-hand side of the screen, down a little bit, and face to the right. So that way, when I loop back up to the top here, I'll draw another row. Let's see if it works. It does work. All right, well, one thing, you know, we wrote this to do. Let's, even though it works, like let's clean up the rest of the program and just make sure that everything is the best that it can be. So let's see, 100 times. So I'm drawing 100 rows of squares, but I only see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rows. So it must be drawing way more rows of squares underneath the screen. That seems a little bit gross to me. So let's change this to be 6 so that I'm really only drawing the rows that I see. If you wanted to test to make sure this does what you think it's going to do, let's change it to 4. Yep, it's only drawing 4 rows now because it, it's only looping these two things four times. All right, so I think that's it. We've written our program. Uh, what I want you to take away from this is two things. The first is this technique where I started with a very common sense algorithm. I thought, how am I going to draw the graph paper? Row of squares, move down to do the next row. And then I decomposed it step by step from there. So I thought, all right, the first step is draw the row of squares. How do I do that? And so I made a method to do that. And it turns out that while I was writing that method, I needed another method. I needed to draw a square. So I created that method, and then I made that one. This idea where you identify sub-problems, and then you solve each sub-problem, that's top-down design. Uh, I hope that has, this has helped you. I hope that you will be able to use it in your own programs.